in advance as early as day 55 to meet the deadline. While the Republican leadership is releasing a first look at their budget proposal, members of the House Liberty Caucus have already introduced a budget bill of their own, closing a projected $497 million budget gap without any new taxes. Delegate Mike Folk is a Republican from Berkeley County, elected to the chamber in 2012. Delegate Pat McGeehan is a Republican from Hancock County, who was, also, who was first elected in 2008 and re-elected in 2014. Both introduced a budget bill into the House last week. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks thank you. Having. Thanks for having us. Let's start with, you know, the basics. How did you guys come up with this plan? Where did it start? Delegate, you want to start for me? Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is the budget is our only constitutional duty to achieve when we come into regular session. And because of the uncertain times in recent fiscal years, we thought it was very important to prioritize uh, a budget and balancing the budget right off the get-go. And so Delegate Folk and I, along with a couple others in our little Liberty Caucus, uh, put our heads together and uh, uh, did some kitchen table budgeting, so to speak, with uh, hundreds of pages of uh, past budgets and, uh, and a calculator. Delegate so. Folk, you told me this is based on a plan that you were going to propose to the legislature last year when we were in a very yeah. long During budget session. During special session, Pat and I looked through sort of what we did at the kitchen table this year, but with just him and I, and uh, we came by basically uh, cutting back to 2015 spending levels or the governor's recommendation, whichever was lower last year. Uh, my spreadsheet had us at $160-some million in cuts last year, and we did that again this year, but again, uh, instead using the governor's budget and then looking at comparing to what we had looked at last year. So let's talk about some of the changes you all made mm -hmm. starting on the base of Governor Justice's budget. You guys were able to reduce that budget by $402 million, and like I said in the introduction, no new tax increases. Talk to me about where some of those cuts well, come of from. Of course, the big line share right away is the $105 million save our state. We, c we uh, implemented the $42 million of smoothing in the teacher's pension, just like they already do in the PERS pension. Uh, we actually refinanced, or assumed that we can refinance the teacher's pension, just like anybody that goes out and refinances their house to improve their cash flow, because the state's had a cash flow problem for four years. We've had negative cash flow. Uh, reducing in the Department of Education, testing related to the smarter balance, the money that was allocated to that, and the technology behind that, we reduced that significantly. Corporate welfare inside the development office, and actually we did one, a one-time directive language to pull $6 million, because that $402 million is $48 million short. So 402, you add the six that we, we uh, use directive language to grab, put, to put in general revenue, revenue, that gives you 408. You end up with a $42 million shortfall. Delegate Walters from Kanawha County has a bill to remove the exemption on managed care, which is a pass through to the federal government, and that makes the additional, the last, makes it up to $450 million. So and we left the teachers raise. Yes, yeah. so and this is what typically happens. You, uh, the governor presents a budget bill that's also contingent on one or two other pieces of legislation. Delegate, can you, can you speak to me about the ability to save the teacher pay raise in your plan? Basically, one of the most important things is that we went after Charleston bureaucracies first. So we reduced actual spending, actual expenditures. So we cut government by targeting Charleston bureaucracies, which uh, we both feel it, or have been become very bloated um, over the last decade. So that's where we were able to come up with the savings. We cut Charleston bureaucracies by about 90 million, almost, and then from some of those savings, we were able to come up with the necessary 2% for teacher rates. Are those savings largely in public and higher education? No, I mean, it was, it, the pain was felt across the board because, like I said, we use that concept about going back to two, 2015 spending levels. L literally, and, and to compare it to what the governor was talking about with higher education, you know, he was talking about eliminating all higher education funding except for Marshall and WVU. Ours didn't do that. Ours, as an example, and I talked to one of the board members at Shepherd, we reduced them by $200,000 as an example, which is 2% of their budget. Very small. It's actually just keeping what they'd already been given as a mid-year cut by Tomlin. So, I mean, ours is a very reasonable approach. It's a blueprint. It's not, there's never been a budget bill since I've been here, and I talk to people that have been here for 30 years, that's ever been passed as introduced. So this is just a great blueprint as a starting point. 
delegate, yeah, I would like you to speak it, to that issue a little bit. Yeah. Do you do you actually see your budget getting passed, or is this just a way to say here is a new set of ideas? Well, I think there would be broad support across both uh, spectrums of the aisle for our budget. Um, whether it would be passed or not, I think it would be wise for Republican leadership to take it seriously, uh, because our budget's balanced right now. It's balanced. They have a blueprint, um, but that includes raising taxes on things like beer, and they still have to come up with uh, somewhere between 150 and 173 million more dollars to balance the budget. So that's a big if. Ours gets the job done right now. Delegate Folk, we have just a few more seconds, but how, what would you say to your fellow House members to get your budget to be taken seriously and given a real good look? Well, two things. First of all, we don't even consider any special revenue stuff like they propose today. So if we do some of that, we can fund it. And I'll just say one last thing is that, you know, the funny thing is, that, and we overlooked this because it wasn't in the governor's budget, you know, public broadcasting, which was $4.6 million funded in the previous year, wasn't in the governor's budget. So we didn't include it. But, uh, you know, the governor would pay that $4.4 .4 million that he has maybe we could fund public, public broadcasting also. Delegate Michael Folk, Delegate Pat McGeehan. I didn't McGeehan, say that, by the way. So. Thank you both for your time I know, tonight. I don't have a problem saying things. <laughs> thank you. As Senate proposed